Hello and welcome to this uh, weekend's Silver Chart Analysis video for Sunday, 20th day of October 2013. Okay, let's take a look at this on the yearly chart first, as there's only a little over two months left in the year. We're over 80% done. Down so far, almost eight and a half dollars per ounce or 27 and three quarters of a percent. And uh, we have a high of 50-50 placed in 1980, appears below that in 2011. And that all started from the lows of 1933 of 25 cents, as of course this was the deflationary period after the Fed started their reign of terror. And the creation of currency has just gone way high to the upside, the debt way, way higher to the upside as well. They increased the debt ceiling limit this past week. Of course, there's no surprise about that. I would have been more surprised had, of course, the debt ceiling would not have been raised, as I would the Oregon football ducks to not score a single point the rest of the year. This is a team that scores 50 points a game. Just a little way of stating it was like a guarantee that it was going to. For back in here is where I was able to understand how fiat currency was created right around 2007, 2008. I figured by around 2010 that the masses would have a decent understanding of this. And then as we go into 2011, 2012, well, we would have ended up having, of course, what most likely would end up in a currency collapse, which I still expect to occur, just the whens. How many more of these periods is it going to take before the masses are able to understand the largest fraud in Earth history? That's a question I'm asking, but I don't think anyone could even ever give me an answer for that. As far as chart analysis is concerned, what I like about these types of movements is you have a good gain from point A to point B. You successfully retrace what you need to in here, a little bit of pierces below, and then you have a test back of the previous high. What's important is establishing a significant high or low. Of course, the last higher low was like, or last low was 375. So I guess technically, Coming back down here in a couple years would make a higher low and then go higher, but no. Any move back up to this level, however long it's going to take, would bring a extremely bullish scenario. And if you know in advance that uh, the currency clip system is on verge of collapse, you buy, you hold, and you wait it through. No one has a crystal ball to state Okay, this is going to be the date or relative time frame it's going to happen. I sure as heck do not. If you were to ask me back in these days here, oh, how about silver as an investment? Well, I really wasn't much into investing in itself, but I would really have no idea. Well, how about when you took economics class? Did they talk much about investing in gold and silver? Um, no, I would have said. Maybe I forgot and they did, but no, 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 I really don't remember. Okay, well, I know you are a, a wagerer, a gambler. How about getting into silver as a gamble, where you buy it, you're going to be, while you're doing this, protecting yourself at any time of a currency collapse, but you buy low, you sell high. Well, I would have maybe listened to you at that point, back in the day. A lot of people today still are not listening even though the information is very important. Let's move on now to the weekly chart, which will then transition to the daily chart. One of the things I talk about, failed moves can oftentimes bring fast moves. And the example, after this declining uh, downtrend it was in, it got above this average with one, two, three, four significant gains back at the QE infinity top of 2012. And at that point, it found successful support in here unable to get above the previous resistance, thus reversing the trend and making these lower lows and lower highs. The 18 average is once again declining. Boom, fast move to the downside. Now what we're seeing is a significant break above this band, which has successfully now been, for about a month plus, been trading within this 18 average band. 
Whenever you make a move like that, what is ideal or what is very common is to come back to this band, stabilize, and then as it's breaking above it and past the previous resistance at a little over $25 per ounce, at that point you can give precedence to state that we are in a bull market and you'd be looking for a multi-month bull market within this time frame. On the contrary, will this be the same thing as it is here? You break above it and then it doesn't break above this high and starts to trend down below 20. You could have a significant move to the downside if and only if that scenario takes place. Now the daily chart explains things fairly well or the setups are there. There's a situation of having a significant gain above this 18 average, then consolidating, unable to of course break past this high downtrend. Now within Fibonacci retracement, I take a high and a low. There is a 61.8 and 38.2%. So this was retracing 38.2%. This is retracing 61.8. Holding this line states that the move from point A to point B is a success. Failing to hold it shows that it's a failed move. Oftentimes failed moves create fast moves. But within this, we have the situation where our first test here and then resisted it again, back down to this level one more time. So two successful support tests at the 20 and three fifths area. And once again, we have finished this uh, last couple of weeks or last couple of days back up to this previous range. Now in this middle, this is an area where it's neutral on indecision. The next move is waiting to happen. So therefore, if of course, you start to see price action getting above this high in here. The 18 average would again start to be rising. One could say that, hey, successful support's been played. We're probably not only going to have a test of this level, but again, of that major 26 to $29 range. On the contrary, breaking down below here, then we'd be talking about a test in here. And, and another example of seeing that is, okay, you go from here to here. If we break below here, then we're probably going to test here. Well, that's what happened. And it had its tests, it succeeded. Now, the more often you test a key supporter resistance area, the more likely it is you take it out. So as it came down here, it was the second test. It was more likely to take it out here than it was here. As it is now more likely on any moves up to the 22 and, well, two ninths level, 22.22, more likely in taking that level out. So that's all I'm going to uh, speak of within today's video, but one final thing, running averages work very well. You can see that this running average here is uh, a good indicator to state uh, if this move is going to fail or succeed because on any moves, what's gonna happen, the series and average is gonna, again, start to continue to rise. And then as it uh, breaks down this key support, then it's going to start to decline. I've also talked about symmetrical triangles, so I'll get that over with now as well, where I was talking about this resistance level. And then of course you had this support level, and then I was talking about this one in here. What I'm noticing there has been more original breaks to the downside, so when I look at something like this, I see, okay, this to me looks like that failure down below, just maybe, just maybe we can uh, start to see this thing start to go higher because that's that failed breakdown to break ourselves out of this symmetrical triangle wedge. But this wedge, of course, is now at the point where it's done because these, these two lines have pretty much crossed. Okay, so thank you for tuning in. Finally, if you're interested in uh, this weekend's uh, NFL picks, which have never won two in a row and twice have lost both, so not doing so well. It's the Minnesota Giants and or Minnesota Vikings and the New York Football Giants on Monday Night Football to go over 47 points. And this afternoon, the San Francisco 49ers and Tennessee points to go over 41. Note, making wages in this market is very comparable to going long or short on a stock code. Your fiat currency in the hopes of winning 
to return more fiat currency than your risk. Bookies and sports will make juice via losers of bets paying between 7 and 10% on their risk. Bookies and stock codes take juice by taking commission twice per trade on the buy short and then again on the sell cover order. Buying stocks, betting on football or hockey, it is all the same. Thank you for tuning in.